How's it going, everybody? Uh, first of all, I'm sorry there hasn't been much content in the channel lately. Last week was my interview to get finally get my citizenship, and yay, I passed. Uh, but I, I didn't have uh, any extra energy to do content that week. So sorry about that, but we'll be resuming content this week with this video. Now, this weekend, Ark Raiders came out, and everybody's loving it. I'm personally not a big fan of extraction shooters, really not my thing. I, you can see me clumsily playing the game here. I think the game is great. And what we're going to talk about is the performance. The performance of this game is amazing. This is a game that's done with Unreal Engine 5. As far as I could go with my dissecting tools, this game is made with Unreal Engine 5.3, uh, but it has a different fork. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And, and it performs amazingly well. The, I'm running it here with DLSS on quality mode, but I'm having the frame gen turned off. And you can see in the screen how many frames per second I'm running. If I turn the frame gen on, the frame rates go through the roof. Like, it's insane. How, how can these people achieve this while other developers are actually using um, frame generation to achieve more than 50 frames per second, which I think is ridiculous. Well, it turns out, what I mentioned before, they're using a fork of Unreal Engine that, from what I understand, they created. Shout out to Wild Dogs. Uh, he's been in the channel before. He has an amazing channel talking about uh, game engines, Unreal Engine, Godot, and all that stuff. Now, I was planning to do a dissection of these models, but from what I could gather, you trying to use my tools is that because this is a multiplayer game, the EXE is highly encrypted. And that's one of the things that I usually use to get, like, unpack the files, because the, the especially in Unreal Engine games, the files are packed in a specific format, and you need to decrypt those files before you can extract the models. In this case, it's pretty hard. It, it's going to be a while till I can dissect the character models in these games, although they do have a big buy of using Character Creator, which is a uh, real illusion software, something that a lot of uh, video game companies are using, which is so it's, it's a standard. But now going into the visuals of this game, as you can see, the visuals are very good. In my opinion, I do like how this game looks. I think it is very photorealistic. It doesn't go to the levels of some games. Um, the past video before this was my video on God of War. And that game, even though it was for last gen, it still looks way better than this one. Now, that being said, that game has a lot of things that the developers did in order to make that game run pretty well. And also that game is in multiplayer and all the things that are going on. So my point is you do need a specific setup if you want to go super realistic, super high fidelity without any issues. In here, from what you can see, they are going with the very simple geometry. The textures look pretty good. They're not the highest res texture possible. But the texture look pretty good. I don't believe they're using Nanit, and I think Wild Dogs also mentioned that they're not using Nanit, they're using regular LODs. And that is why you see that the geometry is not as high as in other Unreal Engine games. But in my opinion, you don't need that. This game looks pretty good as it is, without adding all the other caveats that you would have in order to have higher poly count on your screen all the time. Now, from what I understand from uh, Wild Ox video, and you can correct me, Wild Ox, if you're watching this, uh, they're not using Lumen. They're using a pro babe system, uh, which is something that I mentioned before that we had in Unreal Engine 4, and they had to add it to the fork because this pro babe system is not in Unreal Engine 5. I believe you can make it. I believe you can make RTX GI and the DDGI volumes work with Unreal Engine 5, but nothing above Unreal Engine 5.0. You have to uh, do your own custom stuff if you want to if you're using anything above unreal engine 5. now for those of you who have not watched that video the probe system what it does is it gathers the light around with probes and instead of computing it the way the real-time ray tracing does whenever the character or the geometry is in contact with those probes then th those probes project that light that global illumination into that geometry and that way because you're not calculating every single ray every frame then it's a lot less costly than using ray tracing or even something insane like path tracing this is how we get a very performant video game like we have here with arc raiders it's not the best looking by any means like i said we we talked about god of war i think that's one of the best looking games overall we're going to talk about god of war ragnarok soon on the channel 
And I know the consensus is that you don't need great graphics to make a great game. And I am the opinion that you don't need to have the highest fidelity graphics for a game to be great. However, there is something that is undeniable and it's that good graphics sell. Good graphics sells. It, it, there, there's no two ways around it. You can see it all over social media. You can see it on the mainstream uh, gaming outlets. High fidelity graphics sells and that's why companies will keep targeting those high end fidelity graphics and likely keep failing at giving us a good performing games. I do like that Embark seem to be the ones who were focusing more on let's game this game to work amazingly well before we get the highest fidelity graphics possible. And like I said, I think in my opinion, this game looks pretty good. And the fact that you can run it this well, and you don't need the highest end hardware to make this game run at very good frame rate. And I say that like over 60 frames per second, it's always a good frame rate. That means that these developers are doing good and it's proof that you can still do great things with Unreal Engine 5. However, one of the issues here is that these developers are not using what I would call the most advertised, advertised features of Unreal Engine 5, which is Lumen and Nanite. So that begs the question, is it really worth it to be developing in Unreal Engine 5 if, if you're not going to take advantage of those main features that the engine use. Uh, if you're a game developer, let me know in the comments section down below. What are your thoughts on that? Like, why would you use an engine that has specific feature if you're only going to strip out those and those those features? Like, I understand why people don't stay with UE4 because of uh, certain support, especially if you're using online tools. But there is a problem when I see that the games that work well are the games that are not using the most advertised features. So one of the things that I've seen Epic doing is they're putting a lot of work into UEFN, which is uh, Fortnite create the current Fortnite creative. Um, they seem to want a future where developers just use UEFN to make their games and, and make it sort of like a metaverse where you can just get into games and do that. That's what I heard, like UE6 will have even more um, mix between it, U, Unreal and UEFN because that's what they're pushing for some reason and I don't see that as the future. I, I think that Epic should put a little bit more love into Unreal Engine 5 and give developers the opportunity to use other tools than the ones that are advertised. I know it's very hard for a corporation to backpedal on we advertise all these new features and are we now going to tell developers that there are other resources instead of the features that we've expended so much money on marketing uh advertising on i know that's that's something hard to do but i wish they they just swallow their pride and just go for it because otherwise the the only other options is that game developers would have to make their own forks which is like a branch of unreal engine 5 and that takes a lot of work that takes a lot of work especially for an engine that's being constantly updated like uh unreal engine anyways those are my thoughts on this game, let me know what do you think about Ark? Have you played Ark? Are you into these extraction shooters? What are your thoughts on the four Unreal Engine 4 that Embark is using for uh, Ark Raiders? Let me know in the comment sections down below. Thank you so much for listening to me all the way to this point. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Leave a like and leave a comment because that goes a long way to helping out the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.